Hi everyone. Hope you are doing great today. The Lord has been faithful. My sermon today is about commitment, peace, the protection of God and angels. Do you know 72,000 angels were ready to destroy the war? Let's take a look at Matthew 25:53 to 54. The Garden of Gethsemane is enshrouded in darkness. The benediction has been pronounced at the prayer meeting that Jesus alone attended. The sleepy disciples have been gathered up. Jesus and eleven of his men stand in the midst of the garden, surrounded by gnarled olive trees. Suddenly, there is this sound of marching feet and the clanging of armor. In a moment's time, the garden is bright with the light of torches carried by the temple guards. The garden is filled with a great multitude with sword and clubs. Suddenly, this quiet prayer retreat is transformed into a potential battleground. All of a sudden, Judas emerges as the leader of this vigilante mob. And he walks up to Jesus. And with a sound like the hissing of a snake, he says, Hail, Master! Judas plants a kiss on the altogether lovely face of the Lord Jesus. With that kiss of death, Jesus was betrayed by Judas. When this happened, Peter being the impetuous fellow that he was, and realizing what was happening, drew his sword and struck the first man he could reach. I have never been able to understand why he didn't strike Judas. I think if it had been Peter, I would have gone after Judas the sorry rascal. But Peter cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest, then noticed that Jesus steps forward, possessing more tenderness and gentleness than anyone could imagine. He touches Malchus, the chief servant of the high priest, and his ear is restored. Notice what Jesus says to Peter in verse 52 of Matthew 26. Put up again thy sword into his place, for all that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Then I want you to notice our text again in verses 53 and 54. There are several things I want us to notice in our text. Let's look at the lost possibilities in this first series. Endeavor to watch this video to the end, to be well enlightened. Don't you think for a moment that Jesus was a helpless, powerless victim of this sinister, demon-possessed invaders of the garden that night? I tell you, with a snap of his finger, with just, a, yeah, with just a, a word or a nod, he could have beckoned the host of heaven and cleared out that garden in the twinkle of an eye. The Lord wasn't handcuffed. He wasn't at the end of his rope. There were innumerable possibilities open to him even then. Notice what the Lord says in verse 53. He says, Think it thou that I cannot pray to my father. Our Lord is surrounded by his adversaries and his disciples are not powerful enough to defend him with their evil intent. What can he do? I mean there is the enemy to the front. There is the enemy to the rear. There is the enemy to the right. There is the enemy to the left. What can he do? He says, I can pray to my father. Amen. Don't you like that? This is our Lord's continual resource in the time of danger. He prayed. Jesus Christ was eminently a man of prayer. Even in this situation, he can pray to his father. Now, Jesus had no possession on earth, but he had a father. He has been betrayed, but he, he has a father. He has been given up into the hands of those who test for his blood, but he has a father, a father who is almighty, a father who is omnipotent. Things are beginning to look very dark. There is a cross up ahead, but Jesus has a father. And the Father of Jesus has the whole world in his hands. I want to tell you, dear friends, that excites me. You know why it excites me? Because Jesus and I are brothers and we have the same Father. And in every moment of distress and anxiety and perplexity, I have a Father in whose wisdom and power I can rely. And you know something? My Father is rich. He has infinite resources. You see, 
in my father's house are many mansions my heavenly father is fabulously rich he has all the resources of the universe at his disposal but now listen if god isn't your father you are not rich but if god is your father since he is rich you are rich too i am talking about the riches of the redeemed friend if you are not redeemed don't jump up and down and say praise the lord i am rich because this is all in the family all right there were some possibilities open to the lord he could pray not only that but he could pray to the father who has infinite resources he could pray specifically for angels to come to his aid look in verse 53 in our text do you know how many angels would be in 12 legions of angels Historians tell us that a Roman legion was made up of 6,000 soldiers. And so 12 legions of angels will be 72,000 angels. You see, Jesus had influence in heaven with the Father, the great Lord Father, the great Lord of angels. He could have from the Father all that the Father possessed. All the angelic host was training at the leash to come to the Lord's aid. All he had to do was to say the word and immediately the Garden of Gethsemane would have been crowded with angels as heaven itself. Did you know that God has assigned angels to watch over his children? I want you to know that he has. In the first chapter of Hebrews in the 14th verse, the Bible says concerning angels, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Folks, there are millions of angels at God's command and at our service. Billy Graham says, the host of heaven stand at attention as we make our way from earth to glory. And Satan's guns are no match for God's heavy artillery. So don't be afraid. God is for you. He has committed his angels to keep watch over you. I have a feeling that angels are ever listening to us. Though we do not pray to angels when we pray, the angels are alerted and ready to go to work because of our prayers. They love to walk in that realm of service to which they are called, namely, the welfare of the people of God. When we pray, we can ask God to dispatch angels to do special things. You see, even in Gethsemane, there were some possibilities open to Jesus. There was the power of prayer. There were the resources of his father. And there was the assistance of angels. So there you have the Lord's possibilities. Thank you for watching this first series to the end don't forget to subscribe and turn on the nutrition bell so you can get notified whenever we post a new video god bless you